It's a new week, baby, and time to make some massive gains with BB workout. And that's not bodybuilding, though it is bodybuilding. I'm talking about back and biceps. We're doing a pull day, baby. It's all about the pull. Stretching it out and getting some gains. So usually I, well, often, often I will do supersets of complementary muscles, so or antagonist muscles, so for example, back and chest. So the whilst one's working, the other one's resting. Okay, today we're doing pull, pull, uh, and a lot of movements that you do for back will engage your biceps. So it's kind of like you're almost pre-exhausting the bicep whilst you train your back, and then when you get to the bicep, the bicep's already like, yeah, I've already been worked a little bit, so now I'm just gonna destroy it, okay? And if you do not know my training methodology, if you wanna get some ideas for training and how to get maximize your time in the gym, make sure you press the subscribe button down below, pretty please with cherries on top, so that we can make some gains together, baby. It's all about the gains, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a fun little dumbbell workout, okay? And this one is all about time under tension. I love time under tension. One, because it helps to establish that muscle-mind connection, because a lot of the time, especially if you're new to the gym, you may just be going through the motion, you see a lot of, fit bodybuilders, influencers, you know, you see them kind of swinging the weight around and so you think that's the best way to do it because, you know, if they're doing it and they look like that, then hell, if you do the same thing, you might get the same results and that isn't the case because these guys have been training for years and years and years and they can establish that muscle-mind connection. For the everyday gym goer, time under tension is, in my opinion, and negatives are the best way to really reinforce that muscle mind connection because it's important, especially for bodybuilding purpose, to be able to actually isolate the muscle that you're trying to work. You know, if you're doing a powerlifting movement, you're using every single muscle under the sun to move that weight. It's an external movement, okay? You're using everything. Bodybuilding is about isolating every single muscle so that you can sculpt it into the shape and the physique that you want. So you need to be able to go, okay, I'm working my lats today, or okay, I'm working my, my front delt today, because you want that symmetry. You want your, your front delt, your medial delt, and your rear delt to all be in proportion. You want your quads to be in proportion to, you know, like your inside and your outside quad need to be in proportion. It's all about the symmetry, baby. It's all about those fine-tuning details to make you as pretty as possible, you know? Okay, so <laughs> we are going to be doing a back workout ending with biceps. As I said, you will use a lot of bicep when you do a back pulling movements, so we're essentially just maximizing the fact that we're using biceps to finish off the workout with this total bicep destruction. And you will find that by destroying your bicep, it will also affect your strength on your back movements. Um, and you know, so it it's works in conjunction. Uh, synergistically, okay, and you might find that as you do the supersets, if you are truly hitting failure on every single set, you might have to go a bit lighter and lighter as you go, um, and that's absolutely fine, okay. I have a variant of dumbbells beneath me. I don't know if you can see them. If you can't, it's okay. So, I'm gonna be starting off with bent over rows, okay? So I've got two dumbbells, and what you wanna do with your bent over rows is you're gonna pull the one up, engage your lat, and you're gonna be doing all the reps on the one arm whilst the other one is still just engaged, okay? Slow and controlled negative, okay? Your back's gonna be on fire from the word go. Three, okay? slow and control that negative. At the bottom, stretch it out, re-engage your lat, and go again. Okay, we're going for five. Re-engage your lat, control that negative. Okay, I do not want you swinging at this point. Then you're gonna go up and do the other arm. One, okay. Engage that lat, two, control the negative. Keep the other one static hold, okay, three, Okay, two more. 
two, last one. Okay, engage and up, control the negative. Okay, now we're gonna go together. One. You can see I'm using a little momentum to get it up, but I'm controlling the negative. Three. Squeeze at the top. I got one more in me. Okay. Partials with a stretch until you can't go anymore. Straight into a lighter seat, okay? We're gonna go swing up, control that negative straight again, okay? Swing up, control the negative, okay? Swing up, control the negative. Ooh. Ooh. One more. Okay, partials. Uh, two, and you can see I stretch out, okay? And then re engage. Uh, 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 okay, whoa. Right, bicep curls, okay? We're doing a similar thing. We're keeping that one up, okay? Just out so it's under tension. And then we're controlling the rape of the other arm, okay? Three. No, I think that was four. Okay. All the way up. Control, okay. So. One. Control the negative straight all the way at the bottom, okay? So you literally wanna put it all the way down, straighten out your arm completely, and then go again. You want that full stretch, okay? You want your stretching out of the muscle. That is where you maximize the fascia stretching, maximize your gains, maximizing the blood flow. <coughs> Control the negative, okay? <clears throat> now we're gonna do Hammer curls. You can see I'm swinging a little. That's okay. I'm going until complete. There I drop to a lot of weight. We go again, okay. Swing, control the negative, okay? reason I'm swinging is because the positive will always fail before the negative, which means you won't be able to get it up, but you can control the negative still, okay? So you're gonna maximize complete failure, okay? If you've got a spotter, the spotter can help you get it up, okay? Until you can't even control that negative, when you can't control that negative anymore. Hammer curl, partial tilt. Complete uh, failure. Uh, 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 yee. Okay, so a couple points, so I'll just go back rather than moving the camera. Okay, so that stretch is really important for the back, okay? By stretching out and then re-engaging, one, the stretch out helps to tear, get those micro tears in the muscle. You want the stretch before you re-engage, okay? You don't have to like go like, like a banana, okay? You want to stay with a bit of tension, still controlled. You don't want an injury, but you do want to get that stretch, if it makes sense, okay? The same with the bicep, okay? You want to straighten out your arm as much as you possibly can. I see a lot of people when they're doing bicep curls, you know? And one, they, they're bouncing, okay? And they're just doing that. What are you doing? You're not doing anything. You're not working the muscle, okay? You're getting a nice swing action going, okay? You're getting your pulse up. You're swinging the shit around. And number two, I see a lot of people who just kind of do this. Again, you're not maximizing the most important part of the rep. The rep, the crucial part of the rep for gains is that, the straight out and then going through 
engaging your bicep all the way through, okay? Getting that squeeze at the top and then all the way out, straightening out your arm. If you do that full stretch, okay, in every single rep, you'll find it it's a lot harder. If you're staying here, you're doing a partial range of motion, which can be used in certain points, you know, like if you're doing 777 21s, where you go half a rep and then half a rep and then a full rep, okay? But you want to make sure you're maximizing every single element of the bicep. The bicep is two heads, two muscles. So you want to make sure you're going all the way down and all the way up. And as you see, I do the rotation at the beginning before switching to just hammer grip curls for the partials to failure, okay? Now, because I started with this arm bent under tension, you want to switch it around for the next set. So you're going to do an even number of sets for this workout, okay? So on the second set, you start the opposite way around. So we'll start with the right arm and uh, locked in tension at the same time. And the reason I'm doing this is kind of like, it's a different way to stimulate the muscle. It's time under tension. Again, as I say, it's static hold is never to be underestimated. It is so fucking difficult. And I, I am serious on this note. Doing a static hold, even if you're just like holding a plank or something like that, is a lot more difficult than people realize. So you having to statically hold that dumbbell under tension the entire time whilst the other arm was working and then vice versa, you will find it so much more difficult. So don't go too heavy to start off with because you cannot underestimate how difficult this actually is. I'm literally using 15 kilogram dumbbells. I can like barbell row, you know, 35, 40, 50 kilograms if I really wanted to. Yeah, there will be a lot of swinging on the 50, but I will be able to control the negative. Um, but for this, for this particular workout and where I'm doing such static holds for long periods of times and the negatives and the time under tension, one, I'm really able to isolate my lats in particular, like from the word go, as I said, like I've got that massive amount of blood flow right into the lats, which is what you want. So we're doing set number two, okay? And again, as I say, you're gonna alternate arms. So now it's the right arm, and you're gonna control the negative for five reps. Remember that stretch out at the bottom, re-engage your lat and go. Okay, two. As you can see, I'll do it from the side, re-engage, three. If you struggle with the muscle line connection and you cannot do that re-engage movement, that's fine, just try your best. Remember, keep your chest tight, scapula retracted. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna do the other arm. Okay, ooh, what? Engage, two, three, four, five. Okay, up, control the negative. Control the negative. Three. Four. One more. Partials. Two. Complete. Area. Oh. Straight into the lighter weight. Oh. Okay. Negative up. Well, swing up, sorry, negative down. Swing up, control the down. Ah. Aim is five rips. Oh my word. Ah. Okay, partial ah. tilt, ah. failure, which is right here. Oh, okay, I've got to go straight into the bicep curls, okay. Right, so straight up with this arm. And you're gonna go for five. Control the negative, okay? Straight arm at the bottom. Two. Three. One more. 
Get it back up. And to the other side. One. Two. Now we're gonna go, swing up, control the negative. Swing up, control the negative, come on. Three, two more. One more. Okay, negatives, partials, tilt, complete. Failure, which is like fucking imminent. Straight into the lolly dumbbells. Okay, so we're going up. Control the negative. Five reps, let's go. Two. Oh. Partial still failure. Uh, 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 oh my word. Yeah. That was like soul destroying on so many levels. I'm gonna have to grab some lighter dumbbells, I think, because whew, check out the pump, baby. Yeah. Serious fucking pump going on. My back is on fire, and that's the one thing that I absolutely love. Like as I said, time under tension is the most effective way to engage the correct muscle. If you struggle with that muscle mind connection, like as I said, if you struggle with the engaging of the lat before you pull, that's fine. The time under tension will help you to make that connection anyway because the muscle will start to burn and you'll be able to go okay that muscle's burning that's what i'm supposed to be engaging now i can really focus on it and that's what i love about the time and the tension In, uh, as well as the fact that you get the most massive fucking pump imaginable when you do it so do not underestimate time and attention that is your friend especially for making that muscle mind connection and remember those partials till you cannot go anymore like ignore the pain of the burn of the lactic acid push through that until you literally cannot move that dumbbell anymore that's what you want you want to literally be like oh my word i cannot move it i'm literally just shrugging at this point and another key point is as i mentioned keep your chest up okay yes you're bent over but you still want your chest up okay you don't want to be in that hollow hold position because it's harder to engage your lat in a hollow hold position than if you if if you if you keep your chest nice and tight okay the moment i keep my chest up my scapula retracted i can immediately start to engage my lats if i'm in this position i'm i, I can't feel my lats but if I tighten up I can immediately feel my lats because your lats have to engage to tighten up if that makes sense so if lats are a struggle to make that muscle mind connection just make sure you are keeping nice and tight remember bodybuilding posture is the prim and proper positioning you want to feel like a ballerina even though you're bent over okay you're keeping nice and tight and that tightness will engage the lat to help you make that muscle mind connection so that's today's workout baby super set remember left right left right alternate between the two so you need to do an even number of sets for this workout so it's either four or six and rest enough between sets so that you can really push on the actual super set because you want to literally push drop push drop push drop until you cannot move anymore okay that's the point of this it's maximizing failure on multiple different weights okay and you will find that your biceps are already pre-exhausted by the time you get to them after the bent over rows because you do use biceps as a secondary muscle when you're doing those bent over rows so today's gains are had keep on pumping yeah